Hey everybody, Ed Bowder from the Med School Medic Podcast, medschoolmedic.com. We're here today for a five minute cardiology refresher and today we're gonna to talk about bifascicular blocks. Now bifascicular block is a rhythm and a rate that you may have seen before but may not have recognized before. It's something that's probably a little bit more common than I think we are aware of. But what I want you to know is bifascicular block is a combination of a right bundle branch block and a left anterior fascicular block or a left posterior fascicular block. Now this is important because we have one conduction delay where the heart's turned the wrong way and another conduction delay at a at kind of a different level where we're not getting enough electricity through the heart. Your 12 lead is typically going to show a right bundle branch block and um, a left axis deviation. With the left axis deviation, again, we want to look at, we're going to see a predominantly downward QRS complex in lead three, and we're going to see that in a minute. What the bifascicular block is, it's a sign of an extensive conduction disorder or disease in the heart. It can be caused by a lot of things, previous MIs, um, some type of arthrosclerotic disease, things like that. So what we're looking at in a bifascicular block, your causes. About 60% of people who have bifascicular blocks are going to be suffering from some type of ischemic heart disease. Now again, this could be someone who just has a significant amount of plaque buildup in their coronary arteries or someone who has a congenital defect that we just haven't picked up yet. About 20% of these patients are going to be experiencing hypertension. Now, it's not necessarily a hypertensive emergency. These are patients who have chronic hypertension, generally controlled by a beta blocker, but generally speaking, chronic hypertension may be a cause of this. And then about 5% of the patients you see that are experiencing an anterior MI, that's ST elevations of greater than one millimeter or more in leads V3 and V4, may also be experiencing a bifascicular block. So with these patients, when you look at your EKG, you're going to see these really kind of odd looking QRS complexes, right? Something we're not really used to seeing previously. But what I want you to focus on is you're going to see in lead V1, you're going to see this right bundle branch block. Now, what that's we, when we're following the turn signal criteria, right? You see we have a predominantly upright QRS complex, kind of a dipping and sloping T wave. And what we're looking with the right bundle branch block is in the right bundle in the fascicle there, there's a block there that is not allowing the electricity to come through. Now on the other side, the second part of the criteria is you're going to see in lead three, we have this predominantly downward QRS complex, right? So this is showing us a left axis deviation, and that's kind of the two criteria that we're looking for. As far as the fascicular blocks are concerned, that's part of the criteria for a bifascicular block. You see there's kind of really small R waves in these, QR, in these uh, QRS complexes. You have some rather large uh, S waves, but they're not as proportionate as we want them to be, right? So we have this small R, R wave, a left axis deviation, a right bundle branch block, and what that is leading to is a bifascicular block. Now, as far as your treatment of this rhythm is concerned, again, we always treat the patient, not the rhythm, right? So your treatment for these rhythms that you see is generally going to be supportive and palliative. If you have no ST elevations, you don't really have to worry about it. If you see an ST elevation in leads V3 and V4, again, that's someone, about 5% of these patients will be having an anterior MI on top of having a bifascicular block. The problem with that is aside from the occlusion that we have in the heart, their heart isn't conducting the way that we want it to. So this is somewhere where you want to have to kind of be very careful and maybe be prepared to pace them, be prepared to see an evolution of that MI over time. So again, when we're looking at the bifascicular block, we're looking at a left axis deviation, right bundle branch block, and those, cr those two criteria, generally the biggest things that you're going to see in them. So that's what your 12 lead is going to look like. That's our five minute EMS refresher. I realize it was a little bit short. Be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter. Go follow medschoolmedic.com. Subscribe down below for YouTube. We'll see you next time.